So let's see if we can get a big picture of everything that's happening in this credit default swap market. So I'll, I'll speak in generality. So let's say we have Corporation A, Corporation A, Corporation B, Corporation C, and let's say we have, I don't know, we have a bunch of people who write the credit default swaps, and I'll call them insurers, because that's essentially what a credit default swap is. It's insurance on debt. If someone doesn't uh, pay the debt, then the insurance company will pay it for you. And in, in exchange, you're essentially giving some of the interest on the debt. So let's say we have insurer one, insurer one. Let's say we have insurer two. And some of these were insurance companies. Some of these were banks. Some of these may have even been hedge funds. So these are the people who write the credit default swaps. And then there are the people who would actually buy the credit default swaps. So in, that, in the previous example, I had pension fund one. That was my pension fund. And then you could have another pension fund, pension fund two. And let's just see. Let's redraw some of the 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 connections between the organizations. So maybe I let's say pension fund one were to lend one billion dollars to A. A will pay pension fund one I don't know ten percent. But pension fund one wants to make sure that they'll definitely get the money because they can't lend money to people with anything less than stellar credit ratings. So they get some insurance from insurer one. So what they do is out of this 10%, they pay them some of the basis points. So let's say they pay them 100 basis points. 100 basis points. And in exchange, they get, I'll call it insurance on A. This is this new notation that I'm creating. They get insurance on A. Fair enough. And that's and the reason why this this I won this in, this first insurer was able to do that is because Moody's has given them a very high credit rating. And so when they insure something, it's you're essentially uh, the the total package, right? The the loan to this guy plus the insurance kind of is like you're lending the money to this guy but you're just getting more insurance I mean, you're getting more interest right so this bond becomes a double a bond because it's the, the odds that you are not going to get your money are not the odds that this guy defaults, but it's now the odds that this guy defaults. And Moody's or um, the Standard and Poor's have already said that, hey, you know, these guys are good for the money. They're double A or whatever. So now your risk is really a double A risk and not a double B risk or whatever. But anyway, this happens. You know, this is Corporation B, and maybe Pension Fund 2 wants to lend to Corporation B. I don't know, maybe it's. Maybe they lend them two billion dollars, and they get, they get, I don't know, they get twelve percent. Maybe Corporation B is a little bit more dangerous. But once again, they go to this first insurer, and I don't know. Maybe they get some of it. They get, well, let's just say they get insurance on B, and B is a little bit riskier, so they have to pay two hundred basis points. Two hundred basis points goes from pension fund to to B. Now this. Already, this is a little bit dangerous, right? Because you can think about what's happening. One, as long as this insurer does not get a downgrade from their credit ratings from S&P or Moody's or whoever, they can just keep it issuing this insurance. There's no limit for how much insurance they can issue. There's no law that says, you know what? If you insure a billion dollars of debt, you have to put a billion dollars aside so that if that debt defaults, you actually you have that billion you definitely have that billion dollars there or if you if you insure 2 billion here you don't have to put that 2 billion aside what you have is a bunch of uh people who statistically say oh you know what's the probability that all of this debt defaults and you know so i just have to keep enough capital so that probabilistically whatever debt defaults i can pay it but you don't keep enough capital to pay all of the defaulting debt so you already see uh, an, an interesting risk forming what if all of all of these corporations, for whatever reason, do start defaulting simultaneously. Then all of a sudden, this insurance company has to pay more out in insurance than it might even have. And so you have to wonder whether it even d deserves this double A rating, because it actually is taking on a lot of risk. But in the short term, while these companies are, you know, everyone is doing well and the economy is doing well, it's a great business for these guys. These guys are just collecting premiums, essentially, on the insurance without having to pay out anything. 
Now let's add another uh, twist on it. You know, these, these, these pension funds, P1 and P2, it was reasonable for them to get insurance because you know, they were giving out these loans and then they got the insurance. So they were essentially hedging the default risk right? by buying these credit default swaps, which was essentially just an insurance policy from each of from this insurer one. But you could have another party. And you know, this, this is no less legitimate, really. But you could call them, I don't know, let's call it hedge fund one. Hedge fund one. And they've done a lot of work. And frankly, they often are much more sophisticated than the pension funds. In fact, they, they almost always are. And they say, you know what? Company B looks really, 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 really shady. I, I think 200 basis points for the chance that com- company B defaults is frankly cheap. Because I think there, there's a huge probability that company B defaults. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to lend company B money. Because I'm, if anything, I think that they're maybe about to go out of business. But what I can do is I can buy a credit default swap on, companies B, on company B's debt, which is essentially I'm getting insurance that they fail without actually lending the money. So let's say I do that from insurer 2. So I can go and I'll pay insurer 2. 200 basis points a year or 2% on however on the the notional value of the insurance I'm getting. So let's say it's 200 basis points and let's say that's insurance on you know I'm making a big bet so they're going to give me insurance insurance on B for I don't know 10 billion dollars. And something interesting is going on here already. B might not have even borrowed ten billion dollars, right? So all of a sudden you have this hedge fund that is getting insurance on more debt than B has even borrowed money on, right? And that's it's it's essentially you just kind of have this side bet between these two parties. This party says, you know what, I think it's a good deal. I get two hundred basis points on the ten billion every year as long as B doesn't default. And this guy says I think B's gonna default, so I think that's a good deal on that insurance. And just so you understand the math, so the notional value is ten billion dollars. So what's two percent of ten billion? So you see two percent two percent on a billion is twenty million. So it's two hundred million dollars, right? Two hundred if I did my math correct. So they'll pay two hundred million dollars a year to this insurer. So the two hundred basis points on ten billion is equal to two hundred million. These numbers maybe are a little bit on the big side. But you know, who knows? Actually some hedge funds, this could be a huge hedge fund. This could be, you know, a ten billion dollar hedge fund. Or even worse, they might have maybe it's a billion dollar hedge fund, but they've taken a lo- or maybe it's a t- maybe it's a twenty million dollar hedge fund, but they've taken a hundred and eighty million dollar loan to essentially you know, they to buy this insurance because they think that B's collapse is imminent. So they're willing to take that bet right now. And, you know, it might be a good bet. If B collapses tomorrow, right, what's going to happen? They only dished out maybe two hundred million for maybe that first year, although you normally pay it on a quarterly basis, so they'll pay fifty million every three months. Let's say they pay the first payment, fifty million, right? And then over the next three months, B just goes bankrupt and people realize that, you know, that debt was worth nothing. Then these guys get ten billion dollars, right? But something else is interesting here. I too, they probably did insurance to a lot of other people too, maybe on B's debt, right? Or maybe they also insured, maybe they also insured A's debt. So maybe they gave some insurance on A's debt as well, right? So what happens? Let's say B all of a sudden, B all of a sudden defaults, right? So a couple of things happen. I1 is going to owe P2, let's see, I don't know how much they, $2 billion, right? I2, the second insurer, is going to owe this hedge fund $10 billion. Now, let's just assume just I2 is good for the money. They have $10 billion. They pay to this hedge fund. This hedge fund's great. They get you know great bonuses for the year, and they go buy yachts, et cetera. But this insurer right here, they paid the money. They were good for it, but something interesting might happen. All of a sudden, Moody's finally wakes up these ratings agencies and says, oh my god. Well, there's a couple of things that might make them say, oh my god. First of all, they might say, oh, look, you had to pay out $10 billion. And, and, and I doubt that that was the only person you had to pay. Maybe they had to pay out a lot of money. Now, I2, insurance company 2, you are undercapitalized. I am now going to downgrade your ratings. So you were double A, but since you had to give out all of this capital, Moody's is now going to downgrade you to, I don't know, 
B plus. I'm just making these ratings up, but th- that's that's the sound of how these ratings happen, right? A is better, B is worse. The more A's you have, the better it is. But all of a sudden, when you when this guy is B plus, that and this guy insured, let's say some some other corporation's debt for this pension fund. Now all of a sudden, this insurance that this pension fund had is no longer worth is no longer double A insurance. It's now B plus insurance, and maybe this pension fund by its uh, charter can't hold something that has a B plus credit rating. So they're going to have to unwind the transaction, or maybe they'll have to unload the debt that was insured, right? So one, just by company B defaulting, maybe this guy was holding some of company A's debt and it was insured by insurance company one. Now they're going to have to unload that debt. So just just one default creates this chain reaction, right? This one default happens. This guy has to pay this guy money. Then this guy gets undercapitalized since they had to pay out money. Then Moody says, oh my god, you're undercapitalized. We're going to reduce your ratings. Maybe this guy was insuring, insuring some of A's debt. But now since he was insuring some of A's debt, all of a sudden that, that, that insurance is worth less because it has a lower rating. And now A is, uh, A's debt, less people will want to hold it because there are less people to insure it. I know that's very confusing, but this is really the point that Warren Buffett was saying when, when, when he said that the, the credit default swap market, or in, in general the derivative market, are financial weapons of mass destruction. Because you have so many people who didn't have to set aside a capital, right? This guy could insure $10 billion worth of debt without having to set aside $10 billion. And you have so many people making all of these side bets, but they're all making two core assumptions. One, that these rating agencies' ratings are valid. And two, that the other person is good for the money. But if all of a sudden you have one failure someplace in the system, you could have this cascade where one, there's just a lot of downgrades, and then a lot of the people end up not being good for the